Hello, everyone. Welcome to session two of our seminar series, Wiring Your Business for Profit. A recent national survey revealed that more than three-fourths of the profitable contractors estimating a large number of projects use an estimating software. We want you to be among those contractors who are profitable and successful. Our seminar is designed to show you how to increase your business profits immediately and grow your company efficiently. Hello, my name is John Kelsey. I'm an industry consultant and the national trainer for Hard Hat Industry Solutions, developers of Red Rhino, a web-based electrical estimating software program. I am a 25-year veteran of the electrical construction industry. Our goal for this seminar, Wiring Your Business for Profit, is for you to learn how to make more money and run your business more efficiently by teaching you the key business concepts that make successful contractors. These concepts include management principles, proven winning sales strategies, useful industry standards, and the latest in tools and technology. Today we are working on session two of five. Each session is divided into two segments, business concepts and tools and technology. I recommend you complete the sessions in order, one through five, because session one is an overview and the subsequent sessions build on each other. Let me take one minute to tell you about Red Rhino, the tool we will use to apply the key business concepts you are learning. To apply the concepts covered in this seminar, you need the right tools. Let me illustrate my point. I can teach someone about bending conduit, but unless they use a conduit bender, they cannot apply what they learn. In the same way, we can discuss labor rates and creating winning proposals, but without the right technology tool, you will not grow your business. Red Rhino is just such a tool. I have worked with many software programs and have also estimated manually throughout my career. I know why Red Rhino is good for your business growth, but you'll see this for yourself as we move through our series. You can use Red Rhino anywhere with an internet connection using Internet Explorer. It's been specifically designed and tested for the Internet Explorer browser and may not work properly on other browsers. Okay, let's get started with our key business concepts from Session 2. By now you should have your three handouts for Session 2 and have them in printed form in front of you. If you've not yet printed them out, please pause the video and do so now. Handout 1 presents the key business concepts. Handout 2 is one of two takeoff sheet examples, and Handout 3 is our second takeoff sheet example. First I will cover Handout 1 and present our key business concepts, then move to Tools and Technology and use our remaining two handouts. Now look at Handout 1, follow along with me, and fill in the blanks. Our business concepts segment begin with math. To be successful and profitable, you need to, number one, understand your business numbers. Growing your business and getting new projects cannot be guaranteed, but you can certainly stack the odds in your favor if you understand business numbers. Good numbers add up to success. The first numbers to understand are contained in your estimate pipeline. You need to develop and maintain a healthy estimate pipeline. But what is a healthy estimate pipeline, you might ask? To answer this question, let's look at the numbers. We need to look at five business number fundamentals. Then we will get back to the question of how we can calculate the size of a healthy estimate pipeline. We begin with fundamental number one, your profit goal for the year. The first question to ask is, how much money do you want to put in your pocket by the end of the year? You can also look at it as, your profit goal is the amount of money you want for yourself out of the projects you complete. It is based on your personal requirements, goals, and priorities. Only you can set this number. Fundamental number two is profit percentage. Do you know how much profit you make on average projects, or what percentage of your revenue is profit each year? For instance, out of every project dollar invoiced, some contractors may profit 25% or 15%. Others may profit more or less than that. So, your profit percentage is expressed as a function of your revenue. Get some help from your CPA if you do not know how to calculate it. It's an important number for you to know to manage your business. Our fundamental number three is target revenue. Your annual target revenue is a calculation based on your profit goal and your average profit per project. The target revenue is the dollar amount of projects to complete and collect in order to reach your profit goal. The formula is profit goal 
divided by profit percentage equals annual target revenue. Some people refer to the target revenue as their target gross sales. I will provide an example a little later on. We now move to fundamental number four, projected revenue. While the annual target revenue is the number you aim at to reach your profit goal, your annual projected revenue is the number that you expect will actually happen. In an ideal world, your annual target revenue and your annual projected revenue are identical, but our world is not ideal, so you must calculate the annual projected revenue. In other words, the projected revenue is a forecast number based on projects completed and projects expected to be completed in a given period. The formula is projects completed, invoiced and collected, plus projects backlog to be completed equals annual projected revenue. Now let's make sure we all look at projects backlog in the same way. Backlogs consist of projects which have already been awarded to you that have not been completed. This is important to understand as we discuss an estimate pipeline. Now that I have presented the first four number fundamentals, let's use examples to illustrate them so we can then understand fundamental number five, surplus and shortfall. Say a contractor wants to make $50,000 this year and normally makes 25% profit on his projects. By formula, 50,000 profit goal divided by 0.25 profit percentage gives him an annual target revenue or gross sales of $200,000. Now let's say that we are a few months into the year and the contractor has completed and invoiced $60,000 year to date and his project's backlog for the year is $160,000. Adding $60,000 to $160,000 gives us his annual projected revenue of $220,000. In this scenario, this contractor is likely to end up the year with a revenue surplus. He will complete more projects than he needs to meet his target revenue and is going to make more money. So, revenue surplus is the difference between target revenue and projected revenue, where projected revenue is more than target revenue. This is a good situation. Now let's say that the same contractor has completed and invoiced $40,000 year to date, and his project's backlog for the year is $100,000. Adding $40,000 to $100,000, it gives us a projected revenue of $140,000. This could be a problem. He is $60,000 short of his target revenue, and he's not going to reach his goal of $50,000 profit. He will not get to keep $50,000 by the end of the year. This contractor has a revenue shortfall of $60,000. So, revenue shortfall is the difference between target revenue and projected revenue, where projected revenue is less than target revenue. Are you in this position? Do you have a revenue shortfall? How do you ensure that this is not a problem? You do it by developing and maintaining a healthy estimate pipeline. So, we're back to our earlier question, the definition of, number two, a healthy estimate pipeline. An estimate pipeline is a list of all the outstanding submitted estimates that have not yet been awarded. And, the purpose of the estimate pipeline is to grow your project's backlog in order to reach your target revenue and profit goal. Notice I said estimates that have not been awarded. If all the projects you have are those you are already working on or about to work on, then you do not have a pipeline and you're setting your business up for failure. Don't confuse the estimate pipeline with your project's backlog. If you've been awarded the project, it belongs in your project backlog. If the project has not been awarded to anyone, it is part of your estimate pipeline. The greater your pipeline, the better your chances of growing your business and meeting or exceeding your goals. Okay, so now we need to calculate the size of a healthy estimate pipeline and introduce the number one principle of a healthy estimate pipeline. Number one principle. The estimate pipeline must always be many times greater than your project's backlog. Why? Because even if you win every estimate, if your pipeline is smaller than your backlog requirements, you cannot reach your target revenue or profit goal. Besides, you will not win all the estimates you submit, but you will win a percentage of them. The math is pretty simple. Say you typically win 30% of your estimates. 30% of $500,000 in estimates 
will turn into more backlog than 30% of $100,000 in estimates. So how do you calculate the dollar amount of your pipeline? In order to know the size of a healthy estimate pipeline, you need to know two things. Number one, the project's backlog you need or want to grow your business. Note I said need or want. I'll get back to this later. Number two, the percentage of estimates you typically are awarded or win. Here is why. Let's look at this with a simple example. Assume the year is just beginning and you've not completed any projects. Assume you calculated your profit goal and your target revenue is $500,000 for the year and your current project's backlog is zero. Not very realistic, but it will illustrate the point. This means the backlog you need is the entire $500,000. Now let's say you normally win 25% of your estimates. First we look at the formula. The formula for an estimate pipeline is backlog needed divided by percentage of estimates won equals estimate pipeline. In our example, this equals $500,000 divided by 0.25 equals an estimate pipeline of $2 million. So here's a second example. What if you already have $250,000 in your project backlog? Then you only need another $250,000. The pipeline formula is based on what you still need, not what you already have. In the second example, the pipeline you require is a $1 million in unawarded estimates. Okay, based on the information I've shared with you this far about profit goal, targets, and pipelines, you should have an idea of what size pipeline is recommended. You may be thinking, a healthy estimate pipeline is a very big number. How are you going to reach it? For this, just break it down and set a monthly estimates goal for yourself. The formula could not be simpler. Monthly estimates goal equals estimate pipeline divided by number of months. If you're starting the year and figured your estimate pipeline should be $1.2 million, then your monthly goal is to add $100,000 in estimates per month. One last thought on the estimate pipeline. You may ask yourself, why should I always have a large estimate pipeline when right now I have plenty of work to complete? I have a big project's backlog. Because you are always working yourself out of a job as you complete projects, and you need to create new projects through consistent estimating so you do not become unemployed. You must estimate new jobs all the time. This consistent estimating process develops your pipeline. A healthy estimate pipeline should include a number of estimates far greater than the actual number you need to grow. We will now look at some industry definitions that are important to developing a profitable business. Number three, labor rate and composite labor rate. Your profitability begins with accurate estimating. The accuracy of the estimate is determined by using the right numbers in all your calculations. One of these numbers is your labor rate, as you probably already know. Labor rate is simply the cost of work per hour per person. On the other hand, a composite labor rate, also known as a crew rate, is a labor rate which takes into account that some crew members cost more than others. So, the composite labor rate is a calculation combining the rates of your crew. Using a composite labor rate multiplied by your total labor hours is a more accurate way to estimate projects and ensure profits. So, how do you calculate your composite labor rate? First, you determine your crew mix. The crew mix is the number of foremen, journeymen, and helpers you expect to use on a project. To illustrate, Assume you are estimating a job at 640 hours to complete. Based on the project requirements, you determine that you would assign the job to one foreman, one journeyman, and two helpers. This is your crew mix. Second, calculate the total cost per hour or labor rate of each person, including benefits, labor burden, workers' compensation, and any other costs associated with this hourly wage. I suggest you get a little help from an accountant for this number if you're not sure what to include. The composite labor rate formula is the sum of each crew member's hourly rate divided by the number of crew members. Let's say you determine that your cost per hour for a foreman is $32.50 per hour, a journeyman totals $27.50 per hour, 
and your cost per hour for the helper is $14 per hour. In this example, your crew rate would be calculated as follows. One foreman at the cost per hour of $32.50, one journeyman at the cost per hour of $27.50, two helpers at the cost of $14 an hour each, and total cost for all four equals $88. Take $88 and divide this by 4 people to equal $22. Your composite labor rate for one man hour on this project is $22. Now that you know your composite labor rate, you use the formula for the estimated project labor costs. The formula for estimated project labor costs is the composite labor rate times the total project hours. In our example above, this is a composite labor rate of $22 times the total project hours of 640. This totals $14,080, which is the total cost of labor for this project. This completes the key concepts handout. Next, we will look at our tools and technology segment using the Red Rhino program to apply the business concepts, winning sales strategies, and industry standards covered until now. Soon, we will log on to Red Rhino. But first, gather your handouts for the next segment of our seminar. I assume you also have your username and password on hand. If you're missing anything, pause this session and gather what you need. Please close all applications like any email programs, Excel, or Word, but keep your Internet Explorer browser open. By now you should have your handouts, username, and password in front of you. First, open a new browser window and let's get to Red Rhino. You may recall from session one that I must assume that you, my audience, are experienced electricians that know how to read blueprints and do a material takeoff. You do not need to have experience using software programs. You'll learn how to use a program as part of this seminar series. Remember your two options for our next segment. First option, you can listen to my step-by-step -step instructions and follow along using your own computer browser, navigating as I do. Or second option, you listen and watch the video without following along, so you can come back to your computer later and practice at your own pace. Or, second option, you listen and watch the video without following along, so you can come back to your computer later and practice at your own pace. If you choose the first option and plan on following along, make sure you have completed all the setup steps in our email instructions. If you need any help or have any questions about the setup, please email me at j-o-h-n-k at h-a-r-d h-a-t-i-s dot com. Now let's move ahead. Now back to your browser. In your new window, type rr dot hardhatis dot com. Again, rr dot h-a-r-d h-a-t-i-s dot com. You should now see the login page to Red Rhino. You should be familiar with our login page already. Next, enter your username and password and click on the little circle with an arrow on it to the right of your password. Now you should be on the Red Rhino home page, the central control panel for Red Rhino. When you're estimating jobs, it's common for your customer to ask you to make changes to your estimates. They may ask you to add something to your price or delete something from your price. Today's segment on tools and technology focuses on how you can respond quickly to your customer's estimate requirements. There are just a handful of input functions to learn in order to rapidly create complete estimates. Now this may sound like a contradiction, but we need to do some takeoff entries to learn this right. Then you can fly through estimates. Let me show you what I mean. First we'll navigate to an estimate and the takeoff input page. From the home page in the estimate box, click on view my estimates. You'll land on the estimate list page. Earlier in this session, we covered projects backlog and the estimate pipeline. The estimate list page displays both. Listed projects which have been awarded to you are your projects backlog and those unawarded are your estimate pipeline. Each estimate you create is listed on and can be accessed from this page. Before I used estimating software, my estimate pipeline was a filing cabinet. To look at a certain estimate, I had to find the right folder, 
open it up, and noodle through the pages of the estimate sheets. When I changed one number on just one thing, I had to recalculate every subtotal in total. Now let's drill into an estimate. Click on Estimate Sample Session 2. In Session 1, I gave you an overview of this page, the Estimate page. Look below and you'll see one section on the bottom left named Blueprint E1. Remember, sections are for breaking out pricing. Later, I will have you create a new section and show you how Red Rhino breaks out prices. For the moment, I will have you input materials in the existing section. To the far right of your screen, click the underlined Edit under Takeoff to open up the Takeoff input page. You'll recall from Session 1 that you locate the material on the top left of the page by the Wizards button and it flows to the Takeoff input page on the right. Now let me continue with the fastest way to use Red Rhino and prepare your customer estimates. There are three methods to locate and enter materials. These are Wizards, Assemblies, and Product Catalog. Follow along and navigate with me to these areas so you can look at each one. I showed you how the Wizards are used to input a takeoff in Session 1. Just to review, the Wizards are tools for rapid input of electrical items such as conduit, panels, transformers, and disconnect switches. I won't go deep into Wizards right now because we already covered it in our previous session. Just remember in order to locate your Wizards, click the blue Wizards button and it displays the type of Wizards below. The next method is by using assemblies. Assemblies are pre-grouped materials needed for a complete install of items such as plugs, switches, light fixtures, or receptacle assemblies. Let me give you a specific example of a switch assembly, for instance. To install a switch in the field, you would need a 4S box, a plaster ring, a switch, and a switch plate. If you estimate manually, you'd have to count and get pricing on each one of these items. When using assemblies in Rhino, you just locate the assembly you want to use and type in the quantity. Rhino adds all the parts of the switch assembly, including material pricing and labor required, to install every item. The use of assemblies in Rhino saves you a great deal of time when estimating because you only need to count the number of switches required, not every component. To locate the assemblies, you click the drop-down arrow to the left of the Wizards button and click on Assemblies to see them displayed below. You will see the assembly catalog has assemblies from number 10, which is fixtures, to number 20, which is conduit risers. The third method to add items to your estimate is by using the product catalog. In the old days of estimating manually, you had to look up material prices, descriptions, and specifications in supplier catalogs or lists. Often, items were listed by type, but you often had to look this up in many different places. Red Rhino is this century's answer to that old system, only much faster and efficient because everything you need to know is in one place. For the product catalog, click the drop-down arrow to the left of the Wizards button and click on Product, which displays the product catalog with categories 4,000 through 9,000. Note the product catalog has four categories, 4,000, 7,000, 8,000, and 9,000. Category 4,000 is for data products and not covered in this seminar series. Category 7,000 has material items which include both installation labor and material prices, items like conduit and wire, fittings, boxes, switches, and plugs. Category 8,000 has material items with labor only, no material price. This is an important distinction compared to Category 7,000. Category 8,000 does not include material prices because you'd normally get quotes for the materials. Materials such as panels and switch gear, light fixtures, motor control centers, and transformers. We will be practicing by entering materials from Category 7,000 and 8,000 as those are the categories most often used. First, I will have you input items from Category 7,000. Look at your handout 2, Blueprint E1 Takeoff Sheet number 1, Items 1 through 4. Let's say that in your estimate you must include coring 18 1-inch holes with fire seal and 12 3-inch holes with fire seal. Click on the little plus sign to the left of 7,000. Below, you'll see that it has products numbered from 400 to 426. Items like conduit and supports, conduit fittings, 
conduit L's, etc. Use the scroll bar to scroll down and look at the list. Near the bottom, click on 422, which is core drill, fire seals, etc., and you will see products appear in the box below. Click in the core drill 1 inch box and type in 18 for 18 1 inch core drills. Click in the core drill 3 inch box and type in 12 for 12 3 inch core drills. Below that, click in the fire seal 1 to 2 inch box and type in the number 18. Click in the fire seal 3 to 5 inch box and type in the number 12. Next, click the Add button and the materials flow to the Takeoff input page. Click the Save button at the top of the page to save your work. You will notice that Red Rhino added both labor hours and a small amount of material cost for each core drill to cover replacement cost of the coring bits. Next, slide the slide bar below the Resource button up to the top. Click the minus sign to the left of 7000 to collapse Category 7000. We will now select materials in category 8000. Look at item 5, 6, and 7 on handout 2, your Blueprint E1 takeoff sheet. You will see one 800 amp underground pull section, one 800 amp service section, and one 800 amp distribution section, which must be added to our estimate. Click on the plus sign to the left of 8000. Click on 11006 gear and gear supports, and you see the product categories appear below. Okay, it's time for a side note. It's time for me to show you the Red Rhino unsquinch feature. Unsquinch, of course, is a technical term. It's a feature which helps you better view the materials, so follow along. See the slide bar below the resources button at the top left of the screen? Left click on the right border of the slide bar and pull it over to the right until you have a good view of the materials in the box at the bottom left. I like to adjust it so everything is unsquinched and I can read it. Now back to our input task. In the bottom left box under Products Description, locate 800 Amp Underground Pull Section and type in the number 1 in the box to the right. Next, scroll down and locate 800 Amp Service Section and do the same. Type in the quantity of 1. Finish by adding the 800 amp distribution section quantity of 1. And click the Add button. Okay. Notice that each line that we just input says in the description, see quote. You will add the quote of the switch gear in the expense section of Rhino a little later. As discussed earlier, the purpose of sections is for breaking out prices. When you create sections, Red Rhino displays price breakouts for each section in the recap. In a few minutes, I will show you the recap with two separate sections. Now we will create a new section so I can show you how this is accomplished and what I mean by breaking out prices. To do this, we'll return to the estimate page. Click the back button and you'll land back at the estimate page. Next, click the New button on the far right. This will open a new window, which allows you to create a new section, Name and Description. Click in the Section Name window and delete what is written there. Type in AC Unit. Again, type in AC Unit. Click in the Description box and also type in the words AC Unit to the Description box. Next, click the Save button on the right. You will now see the two sections, one called Blueprint E1 and the new one that you just created named AC Unit. Next, we will input materials into each new section. Click on the Edit under Takeoff in the AC Unit section to open the Material Takeoff input page. OK, you've been here before and you know how it works. Look at your Handout 3 Material Takeoff Sheet 2, Items 1, 2, and 3. These items are a disconnect switch, fuses, 
and a disconnect support. Click the Disconnect Wizards button at the top left of the screen. Click on Disconnect Wizard and a pop-up will appear. Like other wizards, you choose options from the drop-downs to create the product that you want to input. Click the Amps drop-down. You will see that the sizes of disconnect switches are from 30 amp to 400 amp. Select 100 amps. Next, click on the Volts drop-down and change the voltage to 600 volts. Click the number of poles and select 3 for a 3-pole disconnect switch. At the far right, the wizard gives you a choice of fused or non-fused. We'll keep it fused. Click the enclosure drop-down and make it a NEMA 3R for rain tight. Next, click the Find button. Below Products, beside the word Disconnect, you should see 600V 100-3P N3R DISC for 600 volt, 100 amp, 3 pole, fused NEMA 3R disconnect. Next, click in the quantity box and type in the number 1. Click in the designation box and type in AC unit. Next, click the add button and the material will flow to the takeoff input page. Notice that the material and labor for the disconnect switch and fuses landed on your takeoff input page, but there's no money included for support. Next, I will have you add money for the disconnect support. Click on the line that says AC unit, no support, and it becomes highlighted in gray. Click the edit button at the top and it allows you to edit that line of material. Click in the description box and remove the word no. Next, click in the unit price box and a pop-up will appear. I will discuss this later, but just for now, click OK. As per line 3 on the handout 3, AC unit takeoff sheet number 2, we will now add $10 for support. So delete what is in the box and type in the number 10. Next, click Save. If you had several disconnect switches to input, you would just input one after the other using the disconnect wizard until all have been added. Next, I will have you input a connection assembly in the AC unit assembly section. The motor connection assembly works great for making a 3-foot flex connection on AC units, motors, and machines. Click the drop-down arrow to the left of the wizard's button. Click on Assemblies. Click on the plus sign beside number 19, Motor Connections. Click on N3R Motor Connections and a list of connections appear at the bottom. OK, unsquinch the box. Remember? Click on the solid black line on the right border of the slide bar and pull it over so you can read it better. Scroll down until you see number 7, which is inch and a quarter, with three number twos. Click in that box and type in the quantity 1. Scroll back up and click the Add button. Next, click the Save button. Let's see what Rhino includes in a connection assembly. It includes three feet of seal tight, one straight seal tight connector, one 90 degree connector, the wire and extra wire for makeup, including the ground wire plus additional labor for terminating the connection. When you know what is included in an assembly, it greatly speeds up the takeoff process for you, because Red Rhino makes many of the calculations for you. When you're doing a material takeoff from the drawings, you just have to count how many and what size of connections are needed. Red Rhino then inputs the correct connections, wires, and ground wires. Again, the motor connection assembly works great for making 3-foot flex connections on AC units, motors, and machines. Next, we will add conduit for the AC unit using the conduit wizard. Look at item 5 on the handout 3, AC unit takeoff sheet number 2. Inch and a quarter EMT with 3 number 2s and 1 number 8 ground wire. Let's enter it using the conduit wizard. 
Click on the Wizard button at the top left. Select the Conduit Wizard. Click the Material drop-down and select EMT. To the right, click the Size drop-down and select Inch and a Quarter. Next, click the Find button at the top right. Then, click in the Run Length box and type in 80 for 80 feet. Click in the Number of Runs box and make the number of runs 1. Click the wire drop-down and select wire number 2. To the right, click in the number of box and type in 3. Next, click the second wire drop-down box and select a number 8 ground. To the right, click in the number of box and type in 1. We will be leaving the makeup length a foot and a half. Click in the L's box and type in the number 3 for 390s. Finally, click the Add button and the material will flow to the right side of our page. Click the Save button. You will remember that the Conduit Wizard inputs conduit, connectors and couplings, hangers, 90 degree bends, and extra wire for makeup. Next, we will use the breaker wizard to input the 100 amp breaker to feed the AC unit. Click the wizards button and click on breaker wizard. Click on the amps drop down and select 100 amp. Click on the number of poles drop down and select 3. Next, click the find button at the top. Click in the Quantity box and type in the number 1. Next, click the Add button. Click the red X at the top of the pop-up to remove it from the screen. Now click the Save button and I want to point something out. Red Rhino inputs termination labor for installing breakers. However, it does not have additional labor for installing a breaker in a live panel. Installing in a live panel requires labor to safe off the panel to protect the installer. Next, we will add additional labor for installing the breaker to either power down the panel or to safe it off for installation. Click on the button Add Labor. Click in the description box and type Labor Adder for Installing Breaker. Again, type in Labor Adder for Installing Breaker. Click in the Quantity box and type in number 1. Click in the Labor Hours and type in 2 for 2 hours. Click the Save button at the top to save your work. Next we will input the expenses and quotes from the material takeoff. Click the Browser Back button and you'll land on the Estimate page where you see the two sections. Click the top view in the Blueprint E1 section under the New and View Multiple buttons. Again, click the top one and we will input expenses. This opens up to the Expense page where you input expenses, quotes, and subcontracts. Next, click the top two Create buttons one after the other. Click the top one and after it expands, scroll down and click the other one. Look at item 5 on Handout 2, Blueprint E1, Takeoff Sheet Number 1. We will now input the quoted price of the switchgear into quotes. Use the scroll bar on the right and scroll down until you see Quotes for Section, Blueprint E1. Next, click on the underlined Number 9 for switchgear. Once that opens, click in the Amount box. The quoted price on the takeoff sheet shows $6,560. Type in that number in the amount box. Click the Save button at the far right. Scroll down again and you'll see where it saved the number you input on the right. Next, we will move to the section called AC Unit and input for the breaker quote. 
click any back button on the right, which takes you again to the estimate. Again, below the New and View Multiple buttons, click View Other Expenses across from the AC section. Do the same thing and click the top two Create buttons. Look at Item 6 of Handout 3, AC Unit Takeoff Sheet number 2. We will now input the quoted price of the 100 amp breaker. Use the scroll bar on the right to scroll down until you see the quotes for section AC unit. Next, click on the underline number 9 for switchgear. Click in the description box and remove the word switchgear. Type in the description 100 amp breaker. Next, click in the amount box. The quoted price on the takeoff sheet shows $560. Type that number in the amount box. Click the Save button at the far right. Now click any back button on the right which takes you again to the estimate. We're now back at the estimate page. Next we will look at the recap to see how both sections have allowed you to break out their corresponding costs. Click on the Recap button at the top left. In Session 1, we reviewed the recap with an estimate that had just one section. This is what the recap looks like with an estimate that has two sections. The layout of this page was described in detail during Session 1. Now we will assume that your accountant has recalculated your business overhead percentage and you have decided to use a different profit percentage. So I will now have you change the overhead percent and profit percent of an estimate. At the top right, you will see the Edit button. Click on the Edit button and it will open up so you can adjust the overhead, profit, and so on. Click in the Overhead Percent box and change it to 15%. Next, click in the Profit Percent box and change it to 15% as well. In this example, let's just adjust the crew rate. Earlier in this session, I explained how to calculate your crew rate. If you know what your crew rate is, then enter it into the crew rate box. If not, just for this example, enter in $35. So type in 35. Next, click the Save button on the right. Red Rhino will automatically adjust the labor cost to the crew rate you entered. Now let's take a look at the recap that has two prices broken down into two sections. As discussed in Session 1, the items on the left describe each price. At the top left, you see the material cost. Let your eyes run straight across to the right and you'll see three columns. The farthest column to the left is the total. To the right of that is Blueprint E1 column, and to the far right is the AC unit section. Each column shows total material and labor cost for that section. To view the total hours for the job, you look across from crew labor hours to the total column. Next I will show you how the numbers transfer to the proposal. Click in the Estimate button at the top right of the page. You're now on the Estimate page for Estimate Sample Session 2. Next, click the Proposal slash RCO button. A window opens up a dialog box that reads, You have chosen to create a proposal from an estimate. Click on the circle with an arrow to the right of Select Customer. We provided you with one customer to use as an example. Click on Sample Customer. Next, click the Save button. Scroll down a bit and you will see that the price of each section flowed to the proposal. It also shows the total price of the estimate. Next I will have you input qualifications, inclusions, and exclusions. Click on the Qualifications button at the top of the page. Next, click the Look Up button at the far right of the page and it will display the various qualifications you can choose from. At the far left of the page, click in four or five of the boxes. Since my intent is to have you get used to navigating and learning your way around, for now I'm not concerned on what qualifications you select. Next, click the Select button at the top right of the screen. 
Then, click the Back button and you will land back on the proposal page. Scroll down and see where the qualifications are located at the bottom of the page. Now we will do the same thing with inclusions and exclusions. Click on the inclusions slash exclusions button at the top of the page. Next, click the top right lookup button at the far right of the page and it will display the inclusions you can select. At the far left of the page, click any three of the boxes. Next, click the select button in the top right of the screen. We will do the same for exclusions. Click the top right lookup button at the far right of the page and it will display the exclusions you can choose from. At the far left of the page, click any three of the boxes. Click the select button at the far right. Then, click the back button and you will land back on the proposal page. Scroll down and see where the inclusions and exclusions located on the page. You will learn more proposal edit functions in later sessions so you can customize your proposals. Click on the print preview at the top right of the page to see the view of how the proposal looks to the customer. Now notice that when you create separate sections with Red Rhino and input materials and expenses in each section that the individual section prices flow to the recap page and to the proposal. Next, at the top left of the page, click the Web Browser Back button or the arrow pointing to the left at the top of the page. Okay, I mentioned at the beginning of this session that I want you to be able to respond quickly to your customer, and this includes quote changes. In another session, we will also discuss the concept of a competitive advantage based on price. Let's say that you want to sharpen your pencil now and estimate this sample project more competitively. I'm going to have you go back to the recap and lower your price. From the proposal page, click on the recap button at the top. From this recap page, scroll down a bit and look at the total price for this project and make a note of that amount somewhere. Scroll back up to the top and click the top edit button next to the estimate button. We are now at the recap edit page. Before we make any changes, let's make some assumptions that your goal is for your company to make an average of 15% on your projects and that's why you started with that profit margin. But you're willing to reduce this project estimate to your minimum profit of 12% to get this job. To adjust your estimate profit margin, click in the Profit Percent box and change your profit to 12%. Click the Save button at the top right of the page. This returns you to the Recap page. Now, scroll down and see how your price adjusted. You just experienced how you're able to quickly change your markup to increase or decrease your price on a moment's notice. This is a great time-saving feature. To do this in a manually prepared estimate is far more work, very time consuming, and you risk making mistakes in your calculations when reworking your total price. Next we will go to update the proposal total. It's important to note that Red Rhino will not change your proposal totals while changing numbers in your recap until you confirm that you want to proceed with the changes. This protects you from making unintended changes and gives you a little time to think through how you want to make your adjustments. So, back to updating your proposal total. Click the Proposal slash RCO button at the top of the page. See the Synchronize button in the upper right of your screen? Selecting this button synchronizes the changes of your recap with your proposal. So next, Click the Synchronize button. A blue and gray box appears at the bottom that says you have chosen to update the proposal slash RCO line items from an estimate. Choose the top option and click the circle with an arrow in it next to where it says Proceed with the update. This action takes you back to the proposal page where you will see the program adjust the total on the proposal 
to the same price as the recap. And finally, click the Home button, which is the circle at the top of the page with a little house in it. That concludes the estimating part of our session. We focused on using Red Rhino to respond quickly to your customers' estimate needs. In this session, Session 2, we covered the new key business sales and industry concepts about electrical contracting. We also looked at three ways to quickly add materials to Red Rhino, wizards, assemblies, and the product catalog. How to create a new section to break out pricing and make it easier for your customer to understand your estimate. Entering job expenses and quotes for a complete proposal and how to create a basic proposal. And finally, you learned how to change the overhead and profit percentages of your estimate to offer your customer a more competitive price without losing money. I recommend you practice using Red Rhino. You have full access to this great software during the trial period. Just log on anytime. My name is John Kelsey. If you have any questions, please feel free to call me at 866-444-7411 or email me at j-o-h-n-k at h-a-r-d-h-a-t-i-s dot com. It's been my great pleasure presenting this session to you. Use these business concepts to improve your company, apply the winning sales strategies, and leverage what you learned to grow your company profitably. Mm -hmm.